hey guys welcome back to the channel uh, today we are going to talk about Dao spirit like actually who are Dao spirits where do they come from see this topic of Dao spirit is one of the topic that confuses a lot of people it is one of the topics that is highly misunderstood. There are so many myths, so many misconceptions around it. So there are so many people who want to know and who want to understand about uh, the Dao spirit. Like, where does it come from? How did it start? And how is it now that it is part of their lives? or it is affecting them. How did it come about? So uh, we are going to talk about that now, uh, the Dao spirit. So if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to the channel and activate the notifications so that you can get uh, the report when we post new videos going forward. And please share the channel and also like the video so that it can reach uh, many people. So, Dao spirit, this is how it starts. Now, spirits actually are people at the beginning. They are people first before they become spirit. Yes, they are real people. They are black people. They are found in the areas of Mozambique. Different areas in Mozambique, you will find them in large numbers. They are also found in Zimbabwe. Yes, there are regions in Zimbabwe where they are found there. And they are also found in Malawi. You can find them in Malawi there. They are also there. And um, they have a language that is called Shindao or Chindao. That is their language. So this is a tribe or a nation of black people. They have got a culture. They have got a tradition. They have got the spiritual ways, the traditional spiritual ways. Yes. Uh, they are considered to be the powerful herbalist, to be the powerful spiritualist, uh, the powerful healers. So when it comes to matters of herbs and matters of spirituality, they are considered to be powerful and yes indeed they really are powerful so even here in south africa they are here they are found in south africa but they are um, usually mistaken for for other tribes or other nations because mostly they have mixed with other tribes they have mixed with Batonga, some have, got, have mixed with uh, Bavenda, and so on. So they have adopted the languages of the people that they, they are mixed with, and even the culture, the traditions, they are adopting them. They have adopted the traditions of those people. Even around um, Malamulele, there is a village there called Govu. Initially, that village was for Ndao people. But now they are mixed. But there is a lot of Ndao people. So they are here in South Africa. We do have them. Yeah, so they are really powerful when it comes to herbal stuff, 
and spiritual powers. So they are very feared in most places. So if someone can threaten you about uh, going to Ndao for revenge for something, uh, that person will be very scared, very, very scared. So Ndao people were actually traders. They were business people. They did business. They traveled looking to do business with other people and even other people traveled to their places. So they moved around and other people came to them. They even met Khoisan people during their trading days. So they were trading with different people, more especially the Arabs. Uh, they started trading with the Arabs, actually. So the Arabs will give them the clothing materials such as Njeti, Palu, and the gold beads and other things. And Dao people will give them. They will sell to them bones, herbs, and spiritual powers. They did sell a lot of spiritual powers to, to Arabs and other people that they traded with. They also sold animal skins. So that was their specialization. They were business people. So that's why they happened to meet a lot of people along the way. So now people consider themselves as one people. It does not matter where you are, whether you are in Zimbabwe, Malawi, Mozambique, or in South Africa, or anywhere you are. They consider themselves as one people because they have a common ancestor. So the common ancestor is the one who binds them. Uh, the ancestor is called Mlambo. And another name is also called Musikabano. So this ancestor uh, was considered to be powerful uh, spiritually and was even a rainmaker, had the ability to make it rain and was also considered to be uh, the representative of the creator here on earth. So it was like the creator has manifested into a human being in this person. So that is how uh, it is. So it starts like that from the physical being. They are people who do, who deal with herbs and spiritual life. So after they, they die, they become ancestors or they become spirits who are powerful because these are the things that they've been dealing with when they were alive. So these ancestors um, consider that if you have them or if you have this spirit, you have powerful spirits within you. You are possessed by powerful spirits, uh, the powerful beings. So that's how it starts. So also, uh, Ndao people don't eat the heart of a cow because they consider that heart as a source of life. So that's why traditionally they do not eat it. And they also don't eat fish. Mm. So their diet doesn't include that. Then we come to the question, like since the old people are another tribe or another nation in different countries, how do you as a person, more especially here in South Africa, how do you as a person 
get to have thou spirit or thou ancestors as part of your life. Um, there are different ways that people uh, get to get Dao spirit. There are different ways. Since Dao people were travelers doing business with other people, they made relationships with other people. So some relationships were sexual relations where the children were born. Uh, some resulted in intermarriages, but most of them were because of the trading work. It was all about business. So that relationship, you may see it as a light relationship, but it's actually a very serious relationship. And then they also stayed with other families where they traveled to. For for example, if they could move from Mozambique to here in South Africa, it means they left their family there in Mozambique. And then here in South Africa, they will find a family that they will stay with. So they will stay with that family they will become part of that family. So some will find work in other families. They will work for, for that family as an employee and also be staying with them there. And then other people uh, wanted now people to help them with herbs, and the spiritual issues. You find that they were traditional healers. But because now people are specialists when it comes to herbs and the spiritual matters, so the traditional healers will want the help from the Ndao people. So they will accommodate them, like they will adopt them and stay with them in their families so that they can guide them, they can teach them more about herbs and spiritual matters. So that's how they established most of the relationships. And then later on, uh, after um, Dawe stayed with those people, as we know, it's a natural way that people die. Yes, people die. So if it happens that this Ndao person dies, the family that he is staying with, they don't know where that Ndao person came from. They don't know his home. They don't know his family. They don't know his relatives. They only know him. So they will bury that person as their own. That's how they did it. They will bury him. And then, after death, uh, the spirit of that now person joins that family in the spiritual world. That person becomes the ancestor of that family. He becomes part of that family. So it's like um, he has been born in that family, but he was not born there. He was not part of it. But because they were staying together, they had relationships uh, they helped each other, or they they worked for them, they did business together. He died there and they buried him. He is part of them now. So that is how he, he joined the family. Yes. So this is what we call uh, the good relations. So if this now comes in, in, into the family in that way, uh, he's a very good ancestor, he comes happy, he comes to help. So even his spirit will be protecting and will be providing for that family, will be doing everything good for, for that family. But there were instances 
where the bad relationships happened, where the bad deals happened. You find that when that Ndao person was waiting for that family, or they asked for help from that Ndao, they asked for help with herbs or with spiritual matters, there were agreements that the Ndao person would be paid. In some cases, you find that there was promised a wife, and then when it comes to a paying, they don't pay him, they don't give him the wife that they promised him. Sometimes he has been promised a cow or cows, or another way of payment. As you know, money was not a factor back then in the days. Money was not used. So it was uh, the, the battering system, the exchange process. So when that it's time to pay, they don't give Dendao his wife or they don't give him his cows or his payment that they agreed about. And then this will result in fighting. So some of the people, they will kill these Ndao people. So, so instead of paying them what is due to them, they will kill them. Yes, that's how most of them did it. They will kill them and throw them away. Maybe throw them in the rivers or in the bushes. Some even killed these uh, Ndao people for, for moot to do rituals using their body parts. You know, there are people who use people's body parts to do um, rituals. It was very common even in the olden days that um, a head of a person, they would kill a person and take that head of a person and do a ritual that should uh, protect their family, it should protect them, and it should protect their descendants. That was a very powerful ritual. It was a very strong ritual that even now, if your, your ancestors did that ritual long time ago, it's still effective even now. It doesn't lose power easily. It carry on. It carries on for a very long time. So, different body parts were used to to make moti or to do rituals, such as private parts, the breasts, the eyes, many things. So there were so many herbs that people would mix with uh, people's body parts to do rituals. So that's how uh, people used it to kill the old people for. So they would kill them for, for rituals or they would kill them because they didn't want to, 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 to pay them what is due to them. So that is how it used it to, to happen. So this is the bad relationship. See? And then another way of bad relationship that happened was you find that then the old person was staying with the family they had good relationships when he was still alive but when it's time that when he becomes sick when he is sick the family turns against him they don't want nothing to do with him like they don't know him and then even when he dies uh, the family will refuse to bury him, saying that he is not one of them. And some of them will take these bodies and throw them in rivers without giving them a proper burial. So these Dao people who were treated like this, they were never happy. Their spirits were never happy. See, and then... Another way of bad relationship was that uh, the people would steal things from Dao people or they would take things from them by force. So you see, they will take advantage because um, a Dao person is a person who comes from a far away land and then he has no people to defend him 
and uh, he can't physically fight them because they are locals and he's someone who comes from a faraway land. So they had the advantage. So they will take their things by force or they will steal by they will steal their things. So you see here we have two types of relationships the good relationships and the bad relationships. So both these relationships made the Ndao people, their spirits, to attach themselves to these families. Whether they attached themselves for a good reason or for a bad reason. Even if they had good relationships, they attached themselves to the family. Even if they had bad relationships, they attached themselves to the families. And the descendants of these people are going to inherit these Ndao spirits. Whether they inherit them for the good relationships or for the bad relationships. But the fact remains that they are going to inherit them. So, um, in that part where they were staying together, having the good relationships and everything, and they dwell, this ancestor is usually considered a Nkwembu Walekaya, um, what is also called um, Idlo Zilasekaya, like it's the home ancestor, actually, you see. So when he comes, he comes like a family ancestor. So he comes to protect you, he comes to give you gifts, like the spiritual gifts, and, and all the things that the ancestors do for their people. On the part of where the relationships were bad, where the, the Ndao person was promised um, a price and he never received the price, and where the Ndao person was killed, uh, whether for his things or he was killed for rituals, and where they refused to bury them and where they stole their things. So in this part, when the Ndao person comes, he comes to claim what belongs to him. He does not come like um, that other Ndao person who has the good relationships with the family. So in this case, he comes to claim what is due to him. So he can come for revenge. Is if you don't pay, he will revenge. But if you pay, then he will understand and then every, everything will be forgotten. But he must get what is his. It's either his price or the revenge. So then the descendants who inherit this spirit, they have to deal with them. Yes, they have to, to, to deal with them in that way because it is now their responsibility. Their forefathers who did all of this, they are gone now. And then now it is left uh, among the descendants to do that. Then another one, another way of inheriting the Ndao spirit um, another way of getting the Ndao spirit was about the wars. I'm sure if you followed on some history events, you will know that Nguni people uh, invaded uh, most communities towards uh, the site of Mozambique in the olden days. So in those days, uh, different lands of Batsonga people used to stay that site. They had good relations with Ndao people. And then uh, Nguni people, they did invade Batsonga people, the different lands of Batsonga people. And then they fought them. Uh, they won some of the wars. They subjugated some of the Batsonga people. And they captured some of the Batsonga men. And they incorporated them in their um, 
military. So this um, Ngoni military was used to to invade Ndao people, to fight against Ndao people. You see, um, but some people are usually referred to as Shangans. You see, uh, that word Shangan or that name Shangan, in most cases, is a derogatory word. It's an insulting word, actually. It was commonly used to insult people. So in most cases, it's, it's not good to use that word on you, on other people. Some people will get very angry when you use that name on them. So when Guni subjugated Batsonga and incorporated them in the um, a military a team, they will use uh, these Batsonga people as friends, they will send them first when they go to fight wars. See, so now, uh, Batsonga are being used to fight uh, Ndao people, the people that they have lived alongside with them peacefully for lo for long time. So this war was fought alongside the the Zambezi River. Yes, it was fought there. So many people died in that war. Nguni people died. Ndao people died. Even Watsonga people died. So the people who died in that war, most people refer to their spirit as Ndao. And it is actually wrong to refer to, to, to everyone who died in that war as Ndao. Because Ndao... It's actually a tribe or a nation on its own. Nguni people are Nguni people. They are not Ndao. Batsonga people are Batsonga people. They are not Ndao. So Bandao is a tribe, is a nation on its own. So during that war where people were dying, these people were never given a, a, a proper burial. They just died there. Most of them fell, in, in, fell into the water. Their bodies ended up in, inside the water of the Zambezi River. But the uh, Nguni people, as we know, when it comes to military, it is said that they were very good with military tactics. So that's why they were winning many wars, you see. So Ndao people and Watsonga people, they were actually peaceful people. They were not good with wars. And we hear that the Watsonga people got trained by Nguni people when it comes to military skills. So after they have been incorporated into the, the Nguni wars, they gained a lot of military skills. So when they were sent to fight the Ndao people, they were as good as Nguni people. So... The spirit of the Ndao people who were dying in, during those wars, who were being killed, their spirits were entering the bodies of the people who were killing them. Do you understand? So meaning, the Nguni people and Watsonga people who were um, one team, one military team that was fighting Ndao. So when they were killing Ndao people, the spirits of the Ndao people were entering the bodies of the Nguni people alongside with the Watsonga people, who are commonly called the Shangans. See? So that is how they inherited these spirits of the Ndao people during the war. So the descendants of those people, they continue to inherit these spirits. So those spirits, they want revenge. They were not happy, and then they were not given a proper burial. So they were killed during the invention. So their bodies were scattered on land, at dust, they were in the water. So when they were defeated, they were subjugated too. The Nguni people killed most of the Ndao men, and they took their women. The same thing that they did for Batsonga people, 
they killed most Batsonga men and they took their women for themselves because when they came, they came as men only without women. You see, when they came from Shaka, remember uh, Shaka was the king back then. So when they came from Shaka, they only came as warriors without women. So they had no wives. It was only men. So after they in they invaded uh, Batsonga or Shangans, as some people called them. They killed most of the men. They took the women for themselves. So they did this uh, practice with the Ndao people too. They killed most of the Ndao men and then they took their women for themselves. So that is how some of the Ndao people inherited the Nguni ancestry. This is how they got them. So, the people who have been killed in the war, they need to be happy. Their souls, their spirits, they need to be happy. So now they come to the descendants of those people who killed them. So the descendants now, they carry the responsibility uh, to carry this forward. They have to appease the Ndao spirits. They have to make them happy. They have to pay for the debts. They have to pay for everything that um, their ancestors did back then. You see? So that is how it goes. So if you are related to some of the people who went to the wars there, you might also be be affected. So then the Ndao spirit, since they never received a proper burial, uh, they need some form of embodiment. That is why they bring uh, forth the spirit of healing, the spirit of being a traditional healer. So in this way, the spirit of Dendao will possess uh, the descendants of those people. And then they will be bringing along uh, this gift of uh, traditional healing where you need to be initiated. So meaning your body uh, is how the Ndao spirit uh, does the embodiment process. The Ndao spirit will be using your body uh, to live and to continue uh, the practice of healing using you. That is why you have to be, you, you have to go to Twasa or you have to go to initiate to become a traditional healer so that you can use the Ndao spirit for healing. So, so in that way, if you do that, you appease the Ndao spirit so that um, the tribal acts that uh, your forefathers did may be forgiven or they can be peace. So being a healer is one of those ways. So there are many things that um, Ndao may want. The Ndao will say, so if you consult spiritualist they will tell you like what is required from your side in order to to appease the Ndao spirit and the process of the embodiment so that's how many people got um Ndao spirit as you know like <coughs> there is a saying that um if someone is killed you know Ndao people when you, you kill them they don't let it go without um, paying revenge. They do pay revenge. Their spirits will fight for themselves. They will pay revenge. And in most cases, there is a saying that when someone dies, you do not cry for that person. Uh, that person will, will cry for themselves. Because if you cry for them, you disturb their process uh, in which they have to uh, to avenge their death. Yes. 
Another way in which people can get in the whole spirit is that you you can be walking or you can be in another place. And then, then the whole spirit can spot you and can be interested in you. And then that spirit will possess you. Yes, it happens that it possesses you like that. So this spirit um, is commonly called that it's Nkwembu Wale Handle or Idlo Zilanga Pandle. So it's an outside ancestor. You see, as you can see, there were no relations that were established between uh, your lineage and this Ndahu spirit. But here it is now. It saw you, it found you, it possessed you right there without prior relationships that were established before. That is why it is considered to be an outside spirit. It is an outside ancestor. Yes, that's how it goes. And then, also, the Ndao the people, they also traded uh, with uh, you know, as you know, they traded with white people, they traded with Arabs, they traded with Indians. So this kind of trade, it was not only Ndao people who practiced this kind of trade. Even the, the other tribes or the Adam nations of the black people or the African people, they did trade with white people, Arabs, Indians, and so on. So they established relationships. These white people established relationships with African people. The same way uh, these white people were establishing relationships with the old people. So Africans were traders. They were business people, yes. So these white people, when they established relationships with uh, with Africans, some relationships were sexual, ended up in sexual relations, where children were born. So others stayed together. Others worked for others. So there were business deals included also. Also, the same way it, it happened between uh, the Ndao people and the other black people that the business deals go wrong, it also happened between white people and Africans that the business deals didn't go well. Uh, some of the white people, sometimes they will not pay. Uh, in some cases, they will use force to, to take things from Africans. In some cases, these white people, they will also kill Africans. Some of the white people, as we commonly know, they did enslave Africans. Some raped them and some did horrible acts against African people. So, also, there were good relationships and there were bad relationships. So the good relationships and the bad relationships also continue in the spiritual world, in the afterlife. These white people, after they passed on, their spirits still follow the descendants of the people whom they had relationships with. The same way the spirits of the Ndao people follow the descendants of the people whom they had relationship with. So the spirits of these white people and Arabs and Indians, they still follow the descendants of the African people whom they had relationships with, whether good relationships or bad relationships. That is why in most cases you hear some people saying, Ndao spirits are white people. It is because these spirits um, they came the same way as the whole spirits came. So that is why many people classify them under the whole spirits. 
but they are not actually DAO. They are just classified at under DAO because they came the same way as DAO, where people had business or they worked each other, they worked for each other, they helped each other in the process. So everything that happened with DAO people also happened with uh, these white people. So many people are confused. You will hear them saying that um, these spirits of the white people and Arabs and so on, they are DAO. In reality, they are not DAO, but they are classified under DAO for common understanding because the way they came is the same way that Ndao people came. So these spirits of the white people still come to the descendants of the African people where they will possess you, they, they need to help you, they need to bless you, they need to work with you, they need to protect you. The same way uh, then the whole spirits do where they had the good relationships with your family back then. See? Also, the white people and the Arabs and the Indians who also did bad things to African people, their spirit also come to the African people, to the descendants of the people that they did horrible things to. The people uh, that they enslaved, they raped, they killed, they forcefully took their things. So now, their spirits are not well where they are because of the actions that they did back then. So their spirits are not happy, actually. So they are suffering. So now, they come back, they want to make amends. So their way to make amends is that they possess the descendants of those people. So when they possess them, they want to do good things for them. They want to help them. They give the advices. They give the protection. They give the blessings. So they help, actually. So they come to help. So when they are helping you, their souls feel better. Like It's like they are paying for their sins so that uh, their souls can find peace. You know that in the spiritual world, if you did horrible things, you did bad things, um, you need to account for those things. So this is their way of accounting for the horrible things that they did to Africans or what they did to, to black people. So in that way, um, that is how the relationships were started between Ndao people and other black people and between the white people, the Arabs, the Indians and African people. So that is how the story of the Ndao spirit came about. In short, actually, so I tried to narrate it in short, trying to skip a lot of things, but making sure that um, most of the crucial the crucial information is covered in this uh, talk. So I hope now you have a good understanding of how did the Ndao spirit come about, you see, in relation to us as a South African people, or as Batsonga, Venda, Nguni people, Basutu, and so on. So that's what happened, actually. I hope you understand. So we will talk more about uh, the spiritual side, like the signs. How do you know that you have the Ndao spirit, that you are possessed by the Ndao spirit? How do you know that you are possessed? And we will also talk more about the myth that I said about uh, the spirit. And yeah, we will cover a number of things that are still remaining. But for now, we will leave you to digest this information, familiarize yourself with this information. Next time, we will talk more about the spiritual aspects. You see here, 
we covered most of the physical aspects the physical part so next time we will talk more about the spiritual part yes um so we'll consider this as part one then we will continue with part two and maybe part three if it will be necessary so now spirits are considered water spirits there are some other videos of the water spirits that we made like the snake or the serpent spirit the inkanyamba there is that video you can watch it to familiarize yourself and there is also another video for the mermaid spirit the marine spirits so you can also check that one to familiarize yourself with it um, it's good videos they've got good information and there are also some other videos in the channel you can check the playlist uh, there are some other videos that you will enjoy so we will stop here for now we will continue next time and continue this ndao talk there is a lot to talk about and ndao but we'll try to summarize and make it in a point form Thank you.